A to-do list can be a helpful tool to get your things done and to increase your productivity. In this video, we will learn how to create a to-do list using HTML, JavaScript and CSS. The app will allow us to create to-do items and mark them as completed. So let's get started by opening our text editor. I'm using IntelliJ here, but you can use any text editor you want. So let's start by creating our first file index.html. This is the main file of our to-do list app. Here we set up the basic layout of our page. As with any HTML page, we start by creating the HTML element and the head element. And we set the title to my to-do list. Next, we add the body element. Our to-do list will live inside of a container. So we create a container div. We set the class of the container to to-do container. Now we want to define the heading of our to-do list and set its value to my to-do list. It's going to become a little bit more interesting now because we create the input element in which we later can type the text for our to-do items. So we set the type attribute to text and the ID to to-do input. The ID attribute of the input will play an important role later when we write the JavaScript code because we can use it to read the text from the input field. We want to have a placeholder as well, which will display when there's no text typed into the field to indicate to the user what he should type into this text field. Finally, we want to create a button, which will add the to-do item when we click on it. Now we have defined all the elements which we need to create to-do items, but the actual list to display the to-do items is still missing. So let's create a new L element below the button and set its ID to to-do list. We have created the basic layout of our to-do list app, so now it's time to make it beautiful by adding some styles with CSS. Let's create another file and call it style.css. Before we can write the actual stylings, we want to link our style sheet to the HTML page. We can achieve this by adding a link element to the head of our page and set the rel attribute to style sheet and the href attribute to styles.css, which is the path of our stylesheet file. We've waited long enough to actually see our to-do list in action. So let's open the HTML file in the browser now. As you can see in my preview to the right here, we will see the to-do list app without any stylings. The first CSS rule we want to add is changing the font family to Helvetica. We want to change it for the whole page, so we add it to the body. Our next step is adding the whole to-do list app to a box. We achieve that primarily by setting a shadow around the to-do list. Let's start by limiting the maximum width of the to-do container to 500 pixels and continue by defining the box shadow. The box shadow CSS property is used to create shadow-like effects around HTML elements. We want a black shadow with a little bit of opacity, so we set the color using RGBA with a lot of zeros and the last value 0.1 is for the opacity. Next, we add the padding to the to-do container, so there is a little bit of space between the inner border and the content of the container. We're gonna set the background color of the body to a very light gray, to increase the contrast between the to-do container and the rest of the page. We will improve our box a little bit now, by centering it within the page and rounding its corners. We are using the flex layout to do this. So let's add the display flex property and set align items and justify content both to center. Let's set the height of the body to 100% to make it stretch the whole page and limit the height of the to-do container to 500 pixels. We also want to change max width to width so our container is exactly 500 pixels wide. Next we are going to round the corners by setting border radius to 15 pixels. A margin of 20 pixels creates a little bit of space between the outer border of the to-do container and the rest of the page. Now we will take care of the input field and the button and make them look more beautiful. First let's create some paddings and margins and round the corners of both the input field and the button. Finally we set the border of both elements to a very light grey. Have a look at the result. It already looks much better, right? But we want to improve the appearance of our app even further. What about giving the button a cool color and changing the text color to white? And let's also remove the border from the button. The cyan color doesn't look cool, right? So let's change it to dark blue. And also change the font weight of the button to bold to make it easier to read. In my opinion, our input field is a little bit too small. So let's set the width of it to 400 pixels. We have created the basic styling of our HTML page now. 
But the to-do list isn't working yet. When we click the button, nothing happens. This is because we haven't written any JavaScript code so far. So we have to write JavaScript code now, which adds a to-do item when someone clicks the button and also handles the checking and unchecking of single to-do items. So let's add a JavaScript file now and call it script.js. Remember us linking the style sheet in the head of the page? We have to do the same thing with the JavaScript file. JavaScript files are linked using the script tag. The source attribute defines the path to the file. The first thing we're gonna do inside of our JavaScript file is creating a function. We will name the function add to do. We want this function to be called when the user clicks the button. To get access to the text value of the text field, we have to search the DOM for our input field. Because we have set the ID attribute of the input field to to do input, we can access it by calling document get element by ID. Now let's assign the value of the input field to a variable called to do text. We also want to trim the value. Trimming means that we will remove white spaces from the beginning and the end of the value. Next, we want to access the list element. This element is where we will display the created to-do items. Let's blend in our HTML code to make clear how getting elements by ID in JavaScript work. The ID attributes we define in our HTML are referenced in JavaScript in the call document get element by ID. Next, we will handle the creation of the HTML element for the new to-do item. So if the variable to do text is defined, which means that we have typed any text into the text field, we will proceed creating the needed elements. We have to create two HTML elements for every to do item, the list item itself and the checkbox input to mark the to do item as completed. Let's start creating the list item. To create HTML elements with JavaScript, we use the document.createElement method and assign the newly created element to a variable called to do item. The create element call gets the type of the element which should be created as an argument. Because we want to create a list item, we pass li. Now we are going to repeat the step and create an element for the checkbox. The checkbox will be an input element, so we pass input to the create element call. The input element has to know that it's a checkbox, so we have to set the type attribute to checkbox. The checkbox should change its state when we click on it, so we can mark a single to-do item as completed. We will add an event listener to the input, which listens to the change event. The change event gets triggered when the checkbox changes its state, in simple words, when we click on it. The second argument of the event listener is a function. This function gets called when the change event is triggered. If the checkbox is checked, we want to add a new CSS class to the element. We call this class checked. This CSS class enables us to use special CSS stylings for completed to-do items. If the checkbox is not checked, we want to remove the check class from the element. Now we have created the HTML elements, but we haven't added them to the DOM yet. To add an element to the DOM, we will use the append child method. So let's add the checkbox as a child to the to-do item. Next, we will create a text node, which will show the text of the to-do item. We can create text nodes by calling document.createTextNode and pass the text as an argument. In our case, we have stored a text in the variable to do text. Now we have to append the text node to the to-do item as well. We have instructed the function to create a to-do item consisting of a checkbox element and the text node. And finally, we write the code to add this to-do item to the list. The last step is clearing the input field so the value is removed. We just set it to an empty string. Nice, we just finished writing the JavaScript code, which handles the creation of to-do items. Our final step is telling the button that he should call this function when we click on it. So we set the onClick attribute and call our addToDo function. Now it is time to have a look at our working to-do list for the first time. As you can see, I'm typing learn to code and click on add and a new to-do item is added to the list. Okay, the created to-do task doesn't look good yet. For example, we don't want to have the default bullet of the list. So let's open our CSS file for the last time and fix the issues. The first thing we're gonna do is hiding the bullet. So we set the list style property to none. We also want to remove the default padding so the to-do items are aligned properly. Next, we want to have a little bit of space between the to-do tasks. So we set the margin top to 10 pixels and also a padding around each of the items of 10 pixels. We need a bit of space between the checkbox and the text. So we also add a margin right of 10 pixels to the checkbox. 
Remember the CSS class we added in JavaScript when the checkbox is checked? Now we want to add stylings for it. We want to make the text appear striked through and reduce the opacity a bit. Okay, now we have finished all the steps for creating our to-do list. Let's play around with it a little bit and create some tasks. I want to create three different tasks, learn to code, wash dishes and work out. By clicking a task, we can complete it. And as you can see, it will be striked through, indicating that the task is completed. So we've reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you liked it and you learned a lot. If you want more content about learning to code and support us, please give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. So happy learning and see you next time.